Greetings, Eric the Car Guy here. Still with my sore throat. Well, I just finished shooting the video for uh, oil pressure, but I, I still have this uh, 1.8 uh, Acura Integra or Honda Integra engine out of this car. And I was just about to slide it back under the bench when I realized I could show you uh, something to help you out with your idle problems. Uh, I get lots of requests about hunting idles on Hondas. And, and the, 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 the pecking order goes like this. The first thing to check is for air in the cooling system. So watch the video about uh, bleeding air out of the cooling system. Uh, the next thing to check is for uh, a vacuum leak. And I've also done a video on that, so check out the video on finding vacuum leaks. One very important thing that I should mention is that if you have idle problems and a check engine light, find out what's going on with the check engine light first. Don't go into any of this other stuff. If any anytime you're diagnosing something, if you have a performance issue or any anything like that, and you have a check engine light, pursue the check engine light first, and then pursue other mechanical options. Um, it could be that those mechanical failures are causing the check engine light to come on, and they're related, but you, you may make your life a whole lot easier by pursuing that first because computer's there to monitor all the systems on the engine. If it detects a fault, that's why it sets the check engine light. So it's basically giving you guidance. So I uh, got a check engine light, idle issues, go after the check engine light first. Hondas are kind of known for having issues with idle air control valves at times. I have had people write to me and say that they've cleaned them with success. How long that success lasts, I'm really not sure. But uh, for me, I, I normally end up replacing them. Uh, in my situation, I was, I was working at a shop, so it's not often we clean things or service things. We just replace them and uh, sent them on their way because it wasn't really, uh, uh, well, working at a dealership, you, you don't make a whole lot of money cleaning things. The next thing to try as far as to check your idle air control valve is to take like the butt of a screwdriver and tap on it. And since I've got this out of the car, it makes it so easy. All right, this is the back side of the engine and the intake. So this, this basically here would be the firewall. Um, this is the idle air control valve. It's a stepper motor assembly. Uh, coolant is run through it, believe it or not, to keep it from icing up. This motor moves in and out and lets a prescribed amount of air bypass the throttle body and get into the intake. Uh, this is here for a couple of reasons and is electronic for a couple of reasons because whenever you like say turn the air conditioning on or uh, You put large electrical loads on the engine. It would bring the idle down So what this does is it opens up and allows more air to pass through it and into the intake manifold thus Maintaining a steady idle. That's that's the philosophy behind it anyway. Uh, but if, if you suspect you're having a problem and if this sticks open, it will act just like a vacuum leak because it's letting in too much air. So what will happen is, is the idle will raise and then it will come down. It will raise and then it will come down. It will raise and then it will come down. Well, while it's doing that, just take, take the butt of your screwdriver and smack this. If you notice that the idle changes at that point, then you may suspect something within it. Because if you start tapping on it with, like, like I said, the back of the screwdriver, and I, I think uh, Diesel Crawler will probably yell at me for uh, not using the proper tool, but this one is the tricky one. Now you'll see this, basically you'll see these two valves mounted on Hondas uh, of this vintage, like the 90s and that kind of thing. But this is the fast idle valve. This is a mechanical valve. It actually uses a beeswax pellet to open and close uh, during cold startup. Something that's above and beyond this would be handled by this, the fast idle valve. During cold startup, this thing opens up and allows more air into the engine because subsequently you're uh, adding more fuel. So think of this like the choke. Now, these guys have a different problem altogether, and I've told people to do this over and over, but I'm pretty sure that they didn't understand what I was saying because this is very difficult to explain without the video. All right, what you do is this. Well, I'm probably gonna have to get a wrench down in here. I'm just gonna loosen one. It looks like I'm only gonna be able to loosen it. So I just loosened one and you can take the other one completely out. Now, I do this with the engine running. Um, it's okay, you won't die. But then I flip this cover back. Once you move this out of the way, and I've already messed with this one, 
um, you'll see that this piece in the center moves up and down and then this outer housing will spin and what you do is you run this whole assembly down until it bottoms out like so because sometimes these things get loose this one's actually going pretty far yeah now you can see it's made out of plastic and it's already starting to come up there but this this I believe is more than one time I've had to do this but just just take it down snug okay you don't need to tighten the heck out of it you don't need to get in here with a hammer and beat the thing down but just run this thing down snug and if your idle smooths out this was letting too much air in and this is kind of an adjustment and whenever I show things like this somebody's gonna come up with an inevitable suggestion of their own so check the comments for that uh, and then once you're done just flip it back reinstall the screws and away you go alright so the next time you're having idle problems with your Honda um, those are places to look don't come to me looking for magic bullets because I can't just tell you what's wrong with your car because especially when it comes to things like idle problems there are a lot of things to come into play things that aren't common TPS hardly ever see those go bad hardly ever uh, unless they're damaged um, so stay away from the TPS mostly it's vacuum leaks or too much air and then what happens is is the uh, computer tries to adjust for that and the idle will fluctuate as a result uh, but the number one cause uh, in my experience has been low coolant so that's the first thing to check and if you find low coolant to be the cause or air in the cooling system if you recently serviced the cooling system then you can suspect that that you just didn't get the air out of the cooling system and that's why you have that fluctuating idle but if you uh, didn't recently service a cooling system you find air in the cooling system then obviously find a leak and you can find guidance for that in the how to diagnose an overheat video oh, and then of course after you uh, after you pursue the uh, possible air in the cooling system angle uh, the next thing to look for is too much air uh, and that could be coming from any number of places like I said vacuum leaks being one this fast idle valve could be another or a sticking idle air control valve all those things could be working together or could be the sole cause of your idle issue uh, but the point is diagnose it. don't just throw parts at it please don't throw parts at it I can't tell you how disappointed and frustrated I get sometimes when I get these emails and I've got this laundry list of parts that have been replaced that uh, have virtually nothing to do with what the problem could be so I, I wish I could have helped you and, and that's the way I feel. I feel like I feel like the rescue worker that got there just a little too late. Don't spend your money. Don't be so easy to part with it. Figure it out. Figure out what's going on. I'm I'm going to help you understand the system, so that uh, you have a uh, tools in your arsenal to go out and combat these automotive issues. That's what we'll do. We will dispel the ignorance. I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can visit me at Facebook and Twitter, and you can see me where fine videos are shown. I like that line. And I also like the line of stay dirty, which pretty much means uh, don't be afraid of uh, what's under the hood. Uh, don't be afraid to get in there and get dirty because uh, you never know. You might just surprise yourself. I did. Look at me. I wasn't much different than you once. Trust me. Uh, be safe. Have fun. Stay dirty. See you.